I mean, first of all, you got to understand that, uh, you know, a stock car is a very unique car. The amount of power in the car is about 900. The weight is uh, something really special. There is a very much of a finesse, but at the same time, a, a kind of like a brutality in driving the car. You, you come from cars, like for me, an Indy car from a one car, cars are most of the time the limiting factor is the driver. You know, you can go so fast. For the cup cars, a lot of the time, the limiting factor is the car. You really got to learn to drive fast without driving it hard. You know, it's, it's very different. Well, it's a challenge. You know, the, the two road courses that we that we race on are, are unique and, and different in its own right. You know, Sonoma, it's almost like a short track on a, on a road course. It's really slick, so that race, aerodynamics aren't as important. Watkins Glen, it, it's fun to, to hustle a cup car around that place. You got so much speed, the cars picking up the left front, the right front. It's a fun challenge. From my experiences driving the NASCAR stuff on road courses is like trying to wrestle a lion back into its cage or something. I mean, it is like so much horsepower. You know, you're talking 800, 850 horsepower, tiny little tires, tiny little brakes, super heavy cars, and you've got a steering wheel the size of a school bus in there. Yeah, when I first came in, that thing was uh, that thing was big. We've made the wheels a lot smaller now. You know, Sparco really kind of started that. Momo did that, and Max Pappas he makes wheels now. And I run a, a smaller wheel for a road course race than I do for a, for an oval race for sure. I, li I like running the Cup car on the road course just because they are so heavy. Uh, you know, the tires wear out quick. You know, you're dropping seconds of a lap time in a few laps. The stock car just doesn't have near the grip. Um, I think it. You know, when when uh, when I always discuss with with the IndyCar guys or the sports car guys, you just talk about how at a place like Sonoma on old tires that you really never get wide open because it'll spin the tires in just about any gear at about any place on the racetrack. Yeah, you, I mean, you might be barely getting a half throttle before you're short shifting the next gear, uh, late in a run. So it's completely different uh, type of driving, but it is really fun because the car is heavy, you can throw it around. Um, and the fact that you have that much power anytime you want is, is fun. You can be so aggressive and just attack those cars and you know slide them around. It's crazy how much of a beating and banging those cars can take. You know, you take a car here, you hang a wheel, and, and the next thing you know, you're like, oh, is the suspension piece broke? What's What did I bend? Those things, if you don't jump it over a curb, you're doing something wrong. If you don't hit the curbs right, it's not as fast. Everybody hits them because it's the best way, but the big thing is how you hit them. But you need to know when to use them, how to use them, and how much to use them. Therefore, that's what I always say, it puts back the driving in the hands of the driver and the knowledge of when to use, I always call my tools. My tools are my curbs, my, my clutch, my downshift, my delaying of downshift, the way that I turn in, if I turn in gentle, harder, you know, how much weight transfer I put on the back of the car or I keep it on the front. And in a stock car, you brake so much earlier and you get to have twice the time to figure out if you're gonna get slowed down and make the corner. Whereas in a sports car, everything happens quite a bit quicker. Um, and when you, when you get on the brakes, because you're braking so deep, if you lock the brakes up or you can't get the car slowed down in time, it just happens really fast. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons people have a hard time coming from sports cars to stock cars is because the, the braking zones are so early, you feel like you're not driving the car hard enough ever. The brake zones are, are a lot longer. You know, at Watkins Glen, a perfect example, I think, in a prototype, you know, you brake past the one and tap the brake and you downshift twice and you're back in and back wide open, you know, cup car, you're braking past the three marker and, and, uh, and sliding around. The most challenging part is the fact that the brake usage. Like, you know, usually, you know, when you see in road racing, you know, in open wheel cars and in, in uh, Grand Am, in a uh, sports car, there is a peak brake at max downforce and then the brake fail down. In stock car racing, you press the brake for a lot longer at max pressure and you dissipate the speed, uh, not just when max downforce is on, but actually through the duration of the braking zone. The biggest thing there is, is on the brakes to not try to downshift too quick because once you get the, the rear's wheel hopping, uh, you're in trouble. It, it's not going to stop. So that to me is, uh, is, is the toughest thing to drive one of those. I use the clutch and I control my wheel hop. And I control the movement of the back end of the car with my clutch. So if I end up racing with someone who is only left foot breaker, I know that after 10 laps, I will be able to go under braking and beat him because if he goes in as hard as I do, he's gonna have axle hop, what they call wheel hop. And you use whatever the car will give you, and that's it. It's, 
you got to learn to adapt to whatever the car will, will do. That's why it takes a long time to be competitive in a stock car uh, in a road course because uh, you can be up to a decent spot you know, if you have good techniques, but in order to win, you need to know exactly what you need from the track and the car to extract the best out of it.